Well, if your driveway is that steep, this is a good vehicle for this. <laughs> Americans love their three-row SUVs and clearly adore the Kia Telluride. Production has increased by 60% since it went on sale in 2019. That's every automaker's dream. The 2023 model here gets updated. The front end is new. The amber DRLs and Telluride name on the hood have been 86 There's a freshening in back with an all-new typeface that pairs well with the sci-fi Kia logo. And the cabin gets a new instrument cluster assembly with a larger screen for the interface. The usual stuff. Telluride didn't exactly need a mid-cycle refresh. Sales have been incredibly strong. In fact, these are mostly spoken for before they even hit dealer lots. For 2023, there are two new models, the X-Line and X-Pro, that are only going to make it even more popular. That's because both get an extra rugged look that people can't resist, including an extra 10 millimeters of ground clearance, that's four tenths of an inch if you're not up on your metric system, and embossed leather seats too. The X-Pro that I'm focusing on adds continental all-terrain tires, an upgraded cooling fan for the best towing capacity available on Telluride, 5,500 pounds. It adds a grand to the X-Line's price. The SX Prestige X-Pro I'm in retails for $55,100 with shipping. I'm in San Antonio, Texas for a ride and drive event. Car 4 is ready. Off-roading it with Brian Wong from Edmonds. If you're not looking at that site, write that wrong. But first... We know things progress uh, and the competition isn't standing still. A little more about the refresh. One of the important upgrades is with the suite of Active Electronic Safety Tech, or ADAS. And standard, we have intelligent speed limit assist, that's on all Tellurides, along with a an enhancement with the uh, forward collision avoidance with juncture turning. So when you're making a left-hand turn, the system kind of has your back and is also there to watch over to avoid or, or mitigate uh, a bad situation. Telluride can seat seven or eight, depending on model, so it's great for family duty. There are belts for three here. I'm five foot nine, and two of me will be fine for short trips with enough headroom. There's storage and cup holders, and in the SX Prestige models, at least, USB ports. Like all in this class, seats are low, so there's really no thigh support to speak of. All Tellurides run with a 3.8 liter V6 that cranks out 291 horsepower and 262 pound-feet of torque. There's nothing upgraded there. And as before, an 8-speed automatic does the shifty work. Manual gear changes are done here, not here. The X models are all-wheel drive only and get an upgraded traction control system for its off-road mission. The center differential can be locked, an advantage that most of Telluride's competitors don't offer. The head-up display is improved a bit, a little larger. Wish I could show these better. All right, let's get to the good stuff. Here we go. Kia has set up an off-road course outside of San Antonio. This little guy's missing his horn. Manage expectations. This is a family sport ute, not meant to take on the Rubicon. I'd be surprised to see any of these pressed into this kind of duty, unless it was an owner's kid out joyriding it. I think there are some people who are going to say, this isn't a real true off-roader. But really, how many people do anything even as rugged as this? If the most you're going to do is a fire road, dirt road, gravel, got to get up and down some things to get to like a campsite or through a national park. Yeah. Very qualified for that. Yeah. Um, even on a course like this, which is probably a touch more robust than you'll find on most trails, it's no sweat at all for this vehicle. All right, here we go. The front and rear fascias are designed for a little extra in the approach and departure angle department. Is an extra four tenths of an inch clearance going to make a huge difference? Well, can't hurt. The trick for almost all of this is just take your time. You know, I think I think people see those commercials where people are bombing through <laughs> off-road, and it's like, yeah. no, don't do that. I mean, we're in Texas, right? So the good analogy is to say that 
good off-roading is kind of like, good, like cooking a good piece of meat. And that you really want to do it low and slow. This is where the better approach and departure come in handy. Yeah, these all-wheel drive systems are, in general, pretty smart. They're terrific. While we cover the course, ask yourself if this kind of terrain is on your daily commute or even on the way to your favorite campground. Yeah, I think we have the diff lock on right now, so that's something that you don't find in many of the other vehicles in this class. It kind of gives, to tell you right, a little bit of an advantage. Yep. And you feel it in these situations on this trail where we're ending up with. Chassis is solid. There's no quiver at all in this thing. Ooh, that's pretty bouncy. Yeah. There are some tight turns, a reminder that Telluride isn't a huge three-row sport ute. Yeah, it's pretty maneuverable. Everyone thinks that the Ford Maverick is a small pickup. The two are very similar in size. Grab some photos and video and stuff. We'll okay. catch you on the other side. While Brian's out taking pictures, I can tell you about the EPA fuel economy average, which is 21 miles per gallon. So obviously not a Toyota Highlander hybrid. Um, these are like a washed out ditch and uh, I can feel the tire lifting up, but the others grab on. That is the beauty of electronic traction control. Get a little momentum over this hill. And nicely done. Cameras always do a bad job of showing how rugged courses like this are, just to let you know. You can now see uh, the ground. This is quite an off-camber piece of dirt. There's a section that simulates a washed out riverbed or maybe that horrible pothole near your kid's school. I feel like it's done a very good job both on-road and off-road, which is not something you get all the time. Yeah, that is the black art, isn't it? You know, one setting and it, and it works well for everything. Yeah. Wow, the electronics work really well on this. Yeah, they do. They Good grab that, traction control. Grab that tire right away. Yeah. Engineers on hand say the X Line's suspension is tuned slightly different than the X Pro's. The Pro's all terrain tires on taller sidewalls add extra bite without excessive road noise during freeway driving. Seems like the suspension is softer than the X Line's, but it might simply be the X Line's larger wheels and lower profile rubber. That makes a difference. So we've already driven this on road, and I've got to say, I'm a little surprised that the all-terrain tires didn't make much of a difference. Yeah, they're not that aggressive. So we're not talking like the same all-terrain tires you might end up with on like an off-road truck, or something like a Raptor or even a Canyon AT4. Um, these are kind of as mild all-terrain tires as you get, and like you said, the benefit of that is going to be that on road, they're going to feel, and most importantly, they're going to sound kind of much the same, so not a lot of tire slap. You can still kind of cruise down the highway nice and quiet. Very easy to drive car. Yeah, yeah. And 98% of all driving is going to be done on road. 98% or more. <laughs> yeah, even though you have the X-Pro. On the way back from off-roading, we drove the X-Line and played around with highway driving assist too. How long have you had your hand off the wheel? Uh, 40 seconds. It could help on a long road trip. But many systems will will harp at you after like 10 seconds. This is not Super Cruise, but it's a very good piece of tech. Telluride has always had a handsome cabin with good quality materials. Sort of looks like a modern ski lodge in this X-Line SX Prestige model, the top tier with an MSRP of 54,120 bucks. It gets Napa leather, heated and vented for those tough days on the trail. The most notable cabin upgrade for 2023s is a long instrument cluster with two 12.3 inch screens fused to look like one. That's starting at the SX level. For shopping purposes, X-Line can be had in lower trims. The EX retails for around 47 grand. X-Pro starts at the higher SX trim at some 51 large. It gets a useful surround view camera setup that'll help drivers avoid rocks and logs. It's also fun to show off to passengers. This blind spot camera setup works very well and has saved me from a fender bender or worse while driving on the highway. Uh, more cameras? 
The digital rear view mirror is helpful when cargo is loaded to the ceiling. Door releases feel great. Grab handles are solid. The trim from plastic trees is some of the best artificial bark in the business. The suede headliner is up there with luxury vehicles. There's no shortage of places to stash things away. Telluride is the automotive equivalent of a tackle box. Digital key two touch. You figure everyone is always carrying around a, a smartphone with them. Why do you also need to carry a fob? The phone uh, manages that functionality to lock, unlock, as well as start the vehicle. If you've seen a modern Kia or Hyundai user interface, this will look very familiar. It's an easy to use setup with decent touch response, not super snappy. Lots of redundant controls down below. Wireless charging too, with a fan to help keep the phone cool. The entertainment system and maps can be updated over the air. Maybe Android Auto and Apple CarPlay will gain wireless ability down the road. For now, a cord is required. And if tunes are important to you, the Harman Kardon system is powerful and accurate. The seats get lumbar stabilization that change slightly to keep the driver alert. Only the base SXX line gets three row seating in the middle. All other X models get these captain's chairs. There's the option to give those in back a little love or go for luxurious leg room. Kia claims it's best in class. Pretty sure people can get comfortable here, especially when these are climate controlled. Pretty swanky. Separate temperature zone too. Lots of pockets, including a small one for phones, which is close to the USB port. There's more power down below too. It's easy to get into the rear and passengers aren't trapped in the back. They get their own button. Instead of a kick to open tailgate, you just stand by the Telluride with the fob in your pocket or purse and it will open automatically. And even better, once you've loaded up and walked away, it'll automatically close. Three row SUVs seldom have much room and all the seats are being used and Telluride is no different. My camera bag is a little smaller than a carry-on suitcase. Some new vehicles don't come with spares. This is nice to have far from home. There's a small amount of storage under here and a few things to make using the space easier. The cargo area is unchanged from the 2022 models. Everything up, there's 21 cubic feet of storage. Drop row three and you're looking at 46 cubes. No need to go around back to max out hauling ability. This is 87 cubic feet, just a bit smaller than my first apartment. Let's finish this off with red light, green lights. Green lights? Kia didn't mess with the goodness inside and out that's made Telluride so popular. X-Pro will handle light off-roading without breathing hard. It's a good value, even at 55 grand fully loaded, considering all the features and tech. It's an especially handsome machine, especially the X models. The design has aged extremely well. Yellow light. The pricing assumes you can find one at or below MSRP. Telluride can seat up to eight, but you have to buy lower trims to get that. Nice to have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, but for now, at least, you'll have to plug in to use them. Red Light. It's a very popular vehicle and often extremely hard to buy, even as Kia has ramped up production to around 120,000 units annually. I'm surprised the signature amber DRLs and Telluride hood badging are gone. There's only one powertrain available. Would love to see a fuel sipping hybrid. I mean, it's important to lower our carbon footprint so the children that are riding in these have a bright future, right? The all-electric EV9 is supposed to be around the same size as Telluride for bombing around in stuff like this emission-free. X-Line and Pro replaced Nightfall in the Telluride lineup. Chances are buyers will snap the X models up for looks alone. I see this as pretty much all the vehicle most families need, even if they're doing a little bit light off-roading. You? Uh, I think so too. I think the, the, the question that I have is, I think that the regular Telluride could do this. And I think it could do it about 90% as well. Yeah, there's a couple of the little things where I think the tires make a little bit of a difference because tires always do, they do. make a difference and a lot of people don't understand that, but. Especially on something like this where we're coming up this grade and it's a little bit off camber and yeah, in those situations, yes. But I also think that if you put me into a non-X Pro SX Prestige, let's say of this vehicle, 
I could probably follow you and keep up without too much trouble. You're so. also a good driver. <laughs> You're an experienced driver. That's true. Telluride is a useful family machine. Handsome too. X-Pro and X-Line bumps up the rugged image. Even if owners don't tackle stuff half this tough, it's always smart to give the customer what they want. Special thanks to Brian Wong for his guest appearance. Remember, check out Edmunds. Everyone there does a terrific job. Just like you shop for vehicles, make sure you look at more than one source in your car reviews. A footnote, Brian and I took a detour on the way back to stop at Bucky's. If you're not familiar, it's known for its acres of gas and diesel pumps, just as many stalls in the bathrooms, and food like cantaloupe fruit cups. Uh, seriously though, fudge? candied nuts, barbecue, and most important, jerky. In the excess equals success department, I offer this up for your approval. It just keeps going and going. You can buy it prepackaged, but why? At the counter, it's like choosing your own lobster. I do find the severed head logo a little creepy. Clearly, Bucky was meant to have a body. And you can take the whole beaver home for the holidays or any number of Bucky swag items. It's like crossing a gas station with Disneyland. FYI, with all that food and retail, this is the perfect place to put EV charging stations. Well, that's your first look at the 2023 Kia Telluride X-Pro. I'll leave you with this fun fact. The Kia executives internally call this the Celluride because it is so wildly popular. They've never been able to make enough of them. Good problem to have. Remember, subscribe to this channel, click notifications, follow me on Twitter, and leave me a question if you've got one in the comments. That's Driven. I'm Tom Volk.